Hi and welcome to another video for linmob.net. Um, this is going to be about the Pine Phone and specifically, well, uh, it was going to be about productivity apps on the Pine Phone, but as the major app doesn't work and that's not LibreOffice, which just lets uh, lacks a little button to scale down the content so that you can see the entire page while you're writing it, otherwise you could use it just fine. I mean, it's not great, but it would work. Um, but instead I'm going to make a video that's just going to be about maps. Because in my last video I showed that no maps app and that didn't go so well. So I decided to dig deeper into that because navigation and general maps is a thing that one would need. And there you can see GNOME you know, Maps can work and it works fine for me. Now I don't know why it crashed in my last video. But first uh, I need to show you that I've got this web page which uh, now has excerpts <laughs> and you just click the headline and then you get more of the content. And on Sunday there's going to be another uh, weekly roundup. And then there's the resources page which has uh, quite some interesting information on software. So that might be useful for you if you've got a Pine phone or another Linux based phone. Also I need to briefly talk about the Pine phone and Pine64 because they published a July update two days ago and it's the biggest updates a month and I think they are not uh, being um, wrong with that because they announce a ton of stuff but let's just focus on the pine phone so there's going to be something new not just a pine phone like the pine phone before with like this one the UB ports edition um, with a couple bugs fixed like the USB-C bug which is quite annoying but they um, as you can see here have come out with a convergence package which has this nice little uh, USB-C dock in there which has LAN, video out and USB but also the Pine phone in this convergence package for just $50 more offers three instead of two gigabytes of RAM and 32 instead of 16 gigabytes of EMMC flash. So if you can somehow uh, justify those extra uh, $50, if you have them anywhere, get the convergence package. You're not going to regret getting a device with more RAM, as RAM with modern computers, um, well, signifies Long edge, lo longevity. So I think get the better one, get the 200 bucks one uh, before taxes and shipping, of course, that is, and not the 150 dollar one if you can somehow do that. So now, as you've seen, you know, maps, it's working fine. It has map box maps, and of course, the controls are quite tiny. So you might want to try something else for now and um, there's a f app that is packaged for Mobian uh, and it's called Marble Maps. It's a Plasma mobile app which isn't quite ready and uh, I tried to see how it works on um, on 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 Plasma Mobile in KDE Neon, but I couldn't get the current KDE Neon images to boot at all. Therefore, I tried Plasma Mobile and Post Market OS, but they don't uh, package Marble Maps. So as you can see, the problem is there is a map, and the map is fine. It's an open street map, obviously, but um, it renders slowly, and it just uses a quarter of the screen. So they may be due to scaling uh, differences between um, how Bosch or Fock do it and how Plasma Mobile does it. 
uh, maybe do you just do pixel doubling I don't really recall that because it didn't look bad but yeah so it's going to have some more features but it's very alpha state and it's basically uh, packaged nowhere um, it has a long legacy though because there was also marble maps uh, like this one there's marble maps for Android and there was marble maps for the Nokia N900 and Nokia N9 so yeah so maybe that will be something interesting and I think it's going to be the go-to maps app for Plasma Mobile then of the big projects that are quite current there is Pure Maps. Pure Maps is available as a flat pack um, therefore it's available on Mobian and any other distribution you can en enable Flatpak on so it should be I think you can install Flatpaks on Postmarket OS so you can get it there you can get it on Arch or Manjaro whatever you're going to use and it's also on Sailfish in fact it originates on Sailfish um, as you can see here that's the open repos store for Sailfish and that's pure maps and um, there's also um, a link to the github project and um, it's an active development as you can see so the last release is just six days ago and it has really a ton of features um, it can do navigation and it can show you maps in a variety of different ways. There's a hybrid as terrain traffic um, day and night mode so it's really quite full featured I think and uh, quite interesting too so this is uh, an example route I put in um, which would lead me to Augsburg which is well the next bigger town from here um, uh, oh it's it's uh, Augsburg's actual city sorry misspoke there <laughs> and you can choose different maps providers as you can see here so there's here maps um, which you may know and I think I'm using that one here anyway um, HSL I don't really know what that stands for um map box like on no maps I will just end that route because then uh, you can see the traffic overlay so you could see where there's bad traffic if you have a car and all that other stuff so it's really let's try to get into it you know in more detail um see you can even see little tiny buildings this is a market with which has permanent buildings so all these little um, boxes are houses and yeah map box is based on street map it's pretty great so then there's open cycle map which is interesting for me because I just have a bike and here I think that place is where you can uh, repair have your bike repaired if you need it those little bi yellow bikes and yeah it shows major and minor bike routes so it's helpful if you're cycling and then there's open topo map which is an open topographic map which looks like uh, a lot like the maps um, I used to you know you're used to from having this big book of maps I forgot what it's called in English it's Atlas in German maybe yeah you know in geography where you looked at the mountains and stuff so here yeah that's obviously a topographic maps and that's the Alps and they are quite high so and then there's Sputnik which is a Russian map <laughs> and uh, Panda Forest 
transport I really don't get that one but it's hey it's there so let's have it so I would most likely use map box as the default or open cycle map and maybe if those aren't good enough here maps with this software the one feature I uh, figured out that or I think it lacks is uh, offline maps so all these maps are being loaded live when you're online and there is there are tons of options here in the preferences so you can choose those weird uh, no I'm sorry I don't want to be uh, I want to be nice not not bad you know if you if you're used to miles then use your miles you know why not it's fine and it's there so that's general then switch map modes day night manual uh, language um, let's just see how many languages are there available local well apparently I it doesn't use German because I would that would be the current local so yeah but you can uh, contribute translations if you want to and you can put in some API keys for Foursquare, um, OpenCage, Stadia, and other services. Um, that's here uh, the the voice that, and yeah, it will show directions and so on. Oh, it's choppy right now. It ran better before. Maybe I need to close my other two maps apps here. So yeah, as basically a ton of features, you can uh, use a compass or enable a compass feature. I think that's referring to hardware compass. I don't know whether the Pine phone actually has one. And. Yeah, it zoom level. Um, testing is interesting because here you can test the voice engine. Wait, I need to turn the volume up before. <laughs> Which sounds like that poppy voice known from the. Uh, oh my god, I'm really getting old. I'm know that open source digital assistant that open source uh, Siri I forgot what it called uh, what it was called it was built around the Raspberry Pi um, the mine Minecraft AI I think so yeah tons tons of features and uh, you can have, have really many options and I think it's quite good and it should be uh, the most full featured and best working maps app for the Pine phone and um, yeah I would recommend to try that out even if you don't particularly like flat packs it's worth it so that were three major options um, now there are two that don't really work on this device um, one is Foxtrot um, which is an old GTK2 app and this X2 and yeah see that doesn't really work here um, I've got my Droid 4 here and I have Foxtrot GPS open this is how it's supposed to look and work and as you can see it's well it's made for those older devices it doesn't support pinch to zoom stuff like that because that was really hard on X and uh, you can zoom in and out it's using open street map maps and I think it's well why not it's quite okay and it also has some things you can do doesn't recognize the GPS or the GPS doesn't have the position here but um, it can be quite useful I think enabling track logging is always nice 
and then there's another one um, so you that's Fox GPS on top of uh, pure maps and then there's one that doesn't really work at all and that is Navit uh, I started it here because also on the Droid 4 it starts with this yellow screen and then eventually eventually it will get done and then this is really for navigation I think I couldn't really figure out the UI and when you click that button and you are lost again so <coughs> excuse me uh, Navit isn't what I would recommend although I think it's quite a major project and it is really a car navigation system so it's not really for me I think just because of that and um, yeah by the way that's the Foxtrot GPS homepage which is quite fun it looks really old but um, there has been a new version in 2019 so one year ago that's fine so it's still under somehow uh, active my maintenance I would say so these are the options now of course maybe you want to use Google Maps you can and you can do so in Epiphany and then Epiphany has this feature where you can make any website some kind of an app and this is Google Maps supposedly loading but let me just briefly open another instance of GNOME Web turning the alias of Epiphany here and I'm loading a page in the Mobian Wiki and because I'm opening that site so often I will just use it as install it as a web application and then um, BAM it's there so now I've got as you can see below there here should be well forgot the title here there wiki.mobian.dashproject.org I also uh, added my own blog here so yeah um, um, these are simple web apps that are of course quite limited because um, well Epiphany is while uh, really quite useful is not the best browser in the world to be precise and this is Google Maps which launched and um, yeah it wants me to type in something here I think but you can also always uh, find your location by tapping this button and use it as a shortcut to Google Maps if you want to use Google to look up where that restaurant is or whatever it is especially if you're a regular user of Google services I think that's quite interesting and of course you can do this thing to other uh, web pages like uh, openstreetmap.org and that's working even better because it's well less heavy of a website and here we are that's Munich and this is the button you would have to show the location and yeah by the way na navigation is fine I mean it has to load all the other maps and so on and um, zooming out zooming in it works generally I mean it's not perfect but I think that can be fine and would be totally enough if you're lost so you don't need anything else you can just use that open street map as um, a little web app and you should be fine I think now of course if you're a railway nerd there's open railway map and that unsurprisingly works too so yeah it's loading a bit slowly and here that happens when you use something for the first time it asks 
uh, whether it may know your location and I will allow it because otherwise that wouldn't be so useful would it and I can see the railways of Munich uh, although the overlay is only partially loaded but yeah open railway web can be slower every then and now so I'll skip it this point and just close those web apps because there's more so if you want to play with GPS in general and track satellites G predict is for you I'm not gonna show this because I really don't know what to do with that UI well fuck it I'm just gonna show it um, so you know I don't know I just I'm sorry I and I didn't really look that up because I don't think it's that interesting anyway so um, and then there's Grok which is for every interesting for everybody who's located in the United Kingdom because it is let's see if this looks uh, the UI is way more adapted than uh, Unfortunately, I can't find the position. Uh, I should scroll into that direction. Well, it's it has geographic, uh, geological survey material uh, from Britain, and I think it's quite nice if you're in Britain and if you want to know where you are. So it's not meant as a map per se but you can use it as one and it should work fine now there's another problem with location and that is um, using public transport and for that I installed Ktrip Ktrip is one of the Plasma mobile apps and it is available as a flat pack and I installed it as a flat pack here and I picked two providers here you can it's really a long list um, I picked two Germans one the local for Munich and the German railway uh, see Denmark EU you know and even some in the United States Tunisia Poland Norway global so there, there are quite some providers already and I think if you if your local provider isn't there you can surely uh, add it if they've got open data and now let me search for a route and I'm going from the university not to the university that would be dumb um, let's have a simple yeah and I'm going to Marienplatz, which is major location in Munich, and go. And now it's listing connections, and because you can go by via the underground or subway, it's really easy to get from A to B here. This here must be a bus. No, it's walking. <laughs> See, so you get walking distances too. Um yeah. So if you need something for public transport, of course you unfortunately can't buy your, your ticket or something uh with this, but it generally works fine for finding the route from A to B. Um and that's something, isn't it? So let me just show you another feature you can also see the departures and now I'm going for uh, 
Oh. Apparently I'm hitting something now, I don't know, maybe the app is buggy, I mean it's still infant and let's engine hop on off and uh, now let's have a look at the departures and that's a ton, that's only a local departures apparently not from Deutsche Bahn because it's just local public transport but yeah that works too. So if you're somewhere and you wonder, well, where can I go next? That may be helpful. So that's K-Trip. And that's it for this video. Uh, stay tuned for more. Visit my blog if you want to. And uh, I will write a little blog post for this video with all the links. And stay get ready for the next slim bits update on sunday i think this might be one where i will try to make a video uh next to the post so maybe see you soon on youtube too um if you like this video please uh, share it or subscribe and please leave a comment if you have any feedback or if there's something about the pine phone you would like to know and would like to see on video please just comment and let me know so have a great day and see you soon thanks for watching